late, better late than never. How's that? How's that everyone, uh, you guys doing okay this evening? Folks, it's a living room hour. Now, I just found out Pastor Paul's revival is happening tonight, so <clears throat> I am watching to see when he begins to preach so that we can catch some of that word. Just found out about that. I, so I wasn't able to coordinate it prior to that time, so I apologize for that. I don't want the schedules to conflict, um, you know, because good things can come out of that revival. And um, so when I see him begin to preach, we're going to switch over to him. And actually right now, okay, right now he's at the podium. Here's what we're going to do. Here's what we're going to do. Actually, I need one of you out there to monitor his show, too, okay? So that uh, when he begins to preach, let me know. Just say he's preaching, okay? Because he's on right now, and they're standing up for... I can't hear him, but I can see him. They're standing up right now. So if one of you all can monitor when he begins to preach, that would be that would be awesome. Because I won't be too long, and then again, we can talk after. It's Friday. So nobody has a curfew yet. Um, it's Friday. No one has a curfew yet. But you know what I believe in? Uh, I, I like it when ministers minister because uh, unexpected things come out. Good words come out. Things that can help us uh, in life. And, and Lord knows we need all the help we can get right now. As we, you know what, over the over the course of days, we've discussed a few things, and um, you, you guys see things coming to pass. And I know you've heard that echoed time and time again, but you've seen things come to pass that are uh, incredible, for lack of better terms. Even the dream that was mentioned in Pastor Paul's chat room concerning the fireballs that uh, a lady had in her dreams hitting earth with a horse riding, the horse riding, and the fireballs in particular. And see, what that did was, and I told you before, it's to the point now, I trust, trust dreams the dreams that certainly bear witness to my soul more than the information that, uh, you know, people are obtaining through analysis. That's a fact. And I know that one day, I know for a fact, listen, that there's, there's nothing I can do to change my own mind about this because it was given to me. I know for a fact that one day, without warning, this world will be plunged in a darkness. The components of that darkness will be thick, thick smoke in the atmosphere. Fireballs falling down to the earth, straight down, straight down. Can it a great many people I'll remember the screams? I can still remember the screams. Oh, by the way, tell. Pastor Paul, he is on the um, Global Networks, so he's, he's streaming on the Global Networks. And we're working on his interface. We, there are some programmers redoing his interface. Uh, they are making it um, uh, maximizing efficiency or optimizing it for um, Mac. So if someone could tell him that, that will be good. And for touchscreen, in case he has a small device. So we need all of them. Pastor Scott. Uh, you too will have an interface, your your own personal interface, where you can also see who's doing what. And because people have requests, and uh, part of the function here at COT is not only to manage what goes out to the people, but to also manage the information that comes back, the feedback um, from international individuals. And, and it's difficult. It, it really is difficult. It's not as straightforward as it seems because a lot of people cannot write or they, they can't simply communicate with the U.S. like everybody else. But there are a lot of times when they want to give a type of, uh, you know, donation or something like that to whatever you're doing. 
and they have to go through a currency conversion process and so forth, and, and PayPal is out of the question because it's trackable. And so we have a totally different network that uh, can permit that. And so, you know, it looks like we're really doing the underground church thing right now, um, right now. But back to these dreams, they're becoming so profound and uh, so accurate concerning the formation of events in the world. It's it's just, uh, you know, it's a revelation. It's a revelation that, number one, that the Lord does not lie and that inspired dreams that he gives to us are absolutely true and they have great meaning. Now, of course, everybody has dreams. Some are foolish and so forth, but I believe this concerning dreams, folks. You will, in fact, begin to dream things in accordance with your own responsiveness to the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Here's what I mean. If your faith tumbles and is weak and is back and forth, you may be plagued with silly dreams. Take heed of your dreams, even the silly ones. Test all things by the Spirit. Because you see in the book of Job, the Lord says he will put a person, he'll put a man in a deep sleep so that he won't be hindered or distracted by the world. And he will speak to that man in a dream. He'll give that person a dream so that the world is not confounding whatever the message is, is given, he will put a person in a deep sleep to have their total, total, total attention in that dream, and it shakes them when they wake up. The Lord said he does that, and he said that in the book of Job. Well, there are other entities that can give dreams also, or certainly influence what you're doing when you sleep. There's a process when you sleep. Most people don't know why they sleep in the first place and what actually is happening. But it's a very unique phenomenon. Uh, it proves that you are in contact with things all the time. But you make the choice. Who's the governing factor in your life? By your belief, by your faith. If you do not believe in Jesus Christ, you simply can't accept it. You're, you're going to be influenced by evil entities that have been here for a very long time. Ancient entities, like the Archons, like Lucifer's armies, like Baleo, like Gog, things of that nature. So it's really your belief that will open you up to things in your life. Hopefully, your belief in Jesus Christ is such that he does give you messages. And you know what? I, I tell you this. Don't be so quick to want a dream, right? Let the Lord do that. It's timing. Here's the reason. Here's why I say this. In my personal experience, every dream and every vision he has sent has, has shaken you know what? When I have a vision or a dream, it changes me from that point forward. There's no way I can go back to the same layer again. And so you have to be prepped for the message. The Lord will do that in his timing, but you have to be prepared for the message he gives you. So that when you receive the message, you can properly be equipped to interpret that message. It will do something to your soul, something for you. At that point, you'll know if it's for the masses or simply so that you can be aware and not be shaken at that time. Many people are having dreams about the fireballs coming straight down out of the sky. And I told you guys, I'm always, this time of the year is when I'm in full attention of most things. Because consistently, maybe eight or nine times I've had the same dream consistently since I was the age of, of uh, five consistently. It always takes place this time of year, around the, the months of October to, uh, I'd say, about uh, February. Normally in the fall, it takes place in the fall because the leaves are dead and changed.
changing, they're falling and changing. The sun looks different, it does in fact look different in the fall. But one of these seasons of the fall, many, many events will take place at one time. Now I have my personal belief that I know for a fact a lot of people just simply aren't ready. They aren't ready, kind of like the, the what I told you last time. I wasn't ready to feel fingers underneath my pillow. And so it caused a, a state of fear for a moment. But many people are not ready for what's coming. Because even with all the information we're given in the Bible, with all of what God has blessed us with, His Word in that Bible, we still find ourselves hard-pressed to actually accept everything He gave. You see, because we still fight. We fight them. We fight them by not applying his word to our lives. My challenge to everyone over the last month or so was to apply the words of God to your life in every area, every aspect of your lives. This, in return, will prepare you to endure the times we have to endure. It, it shouldn't be a secret that while money will last, and there will be an economy, that will be a controlled economy. You see, right now it's a controlled economy based on the rule of law. The laws are changing. The governments of the world govern how we can make money. They govern how we can make money. If you go against the law, your money does not, uh, it, it's not made legally. They'll find you and take it away from you. If you're a Christian, you must. Here's the reason why you have to obey the laws of the land if you're a Christian. Number one, the world's against you. And they look at you specifically to see if you're going to falter. They're not looking at those that belong to them. They get away with everything. But to you, the Christian, the one that believes in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they wait for you to falter so they can take everything away from you, so that they can add persecution to persecution. This has been about since Christianity has been upon the face of this earth. In fact, if you so much as believed in God, it's been that, it's been that way in Egypt. It's been that way prior to the flood, after the flood, and right now. The economies will shift, the laws will shift. Everything will seem to be targeted against the Christians or those who believe in Jesus Christ. That's why it's important that you do what the Lord told you to do, because you are a target. You're a target. Back to the dreams again. Many people have had dreams of these cinders or five balls coming down to earth. My dream in particular places that activity at a time at the beginning of, of, of a fall season or something like a fall season. Last night, uh, well, I'm, I'm sorry, the methane that they're talking about mainly understated. In fact, the cloud of methane observed by probes is about the size of Africa and Europe put together, plus sporadic portions here and there. Soon enough, it, it's going to have an effect upon the face of this. Sort of things will become hot. We know by reading Revelation that men were scorched by reason of the sun. We know by trending that sooner or later the oceans will begin to steam on the coastlines. We know that in the ocean the temperatures are rising dramatically and volcanism is increasing underneath the ocean floor. So much so that when you're flying at about 50,000 feet and it's a clear day or night and you look down at the oceans, you can see them lit up. You can see the activity underneath the ocean floor or at the ocean floor. You can see lava chambers opening up all across the world. You cannot 
visually observe the ship because we are inherently land dwellers. But it's only a matter of time before all of us are exposed to this. This is why it's so important that we remain vigilant and sober, not giving ear to strange doctrines, doctrines of devils. And believe me, there are so many doctrines out there. That's just like, listen to me, that's just like the Gnostic Gospels. You guys heard of those? Do you actually know what the Essenes believed? Do you understand that they believe that the earth was not created by God? Do you understand that they think it's another planet somewhere else? And that this world was not created by God? That in fact there, no good can come of this world, period. There's no good intention maintained in this world. You see, they split off from a lot of people because they too had an issue with the words of Jesus Christ. That indicates an issue, a problem. Yes, have you ever noticed that people who actually go and read the Gnostic Gospels, they begin to question the validity of God's Word? In fact, they are the ones they believe, the Essenes believed, that the Old Testament was inspired the archons entities that's what they believe all you have to do is investigate the fruit of these guys and you'll notice they had no prosperity in their trek in their lifestyle they had no prosperity people did not seek to destroy them they actually embraced them Yet their words were destroyed. They themselves murdered many people. Yet a lot of people lean to these type teachings. Listen, you're going to entertain the fact that these archons who never left the earth, by the way, because all they are or the Elohims that were on the orders to do a great many things. But they fell. It's this age-old story about fallen angels. You know what I call the fallen angels? Tricksters. That's exactly what I call them. It's very easy to determine their nature. They give you three truths and one lie. They give you facts. They give people prophecies. All of them come true, and then they ask you to do something unbelievable. Normally, they ask you to sacrifice something or go and kill yourself so that you can be free. This is what they do, tricksters. They do take the joy of people's lives. Folks, that's demonic. These fallen angels, I, I can't even say demonic. Demon means intelligence. So guess what? The, these guys are nuts. They're crazy. And you have more power than they do. The problem is this. A lot of people think, they really do think, they can make it on their own without Jesus Christ, without his true protection. And they cannot. They don't know what they're facing. They don't know what they're... they're a man does not have enough knowledge to live on his own in this world. And I'm not talking about the seen things. But you see, there's a, another realm in this world that's right there with you. They choose when you can see them and when you can't. The truth of it is without the protection of the blood of the Lamb, we're doomed in more ways than one. We're doomed. You see, a, a man of himself cannot make it alone. Now, that fights pride from a lot of people because they get angry when anybody makes that statement. They get very angry. But it's true. It's true. 
That's right, Jules, not leaning unto your own understanding. You see, because the Bible says that a man is not led of himself, yet he's influenced by good or evil. Every step a man takes is ordered by something. If you belong to the Lamb of God, it's ordered by God. But if you don't, it's ordered by something else. Make no mistake, these things, again, are coming in like droves to this earth. Darkness is rising. It's rising. And if we're not careful, we can be taken in by this darkness in a great many ways. It's very seductive and seducing. But although our Lord does not want to lose any of us, it's our choice. It's our choice. Are you guys hearing? Wait a minute. Okay, no, I thought you guys were hearing something in the background. Do you guys hear me or do you hear something else mixed in with me? Wake up, COT. Anybody out there? Okay, okay, good. Good, Gypsy. Anyway, so that's, that's a portion of where we are. Now, I don't want to say too much. I'm going to save a lot for tomorrow. I'm laying the course of a type of a foundation. Because you know what? It's important that everybody knows, everybody understands that we have not been alone here. The other realm is real. And tomorrow, we're going to discuss just exactly how they affect you. Because we can ignore it all day, but sometimes when a person is sitting down, their moods can change out of the blue. The room may seem a little darker than normal. Then it can brighten up. They can afflict your body. They can afflict your mind. This is them. This is the way they do. They're like storms and weather, and they travel in packs. They're always watching and waiting for someone to get outside of that realm. And guess what happens when they get you? When they get you, you normally begin to attack someone else. Vile things come out of your mouth. You can't help yourself but to be offended. You see, this spirit of offense is real. And people, listen, this spirit of offense, or let's just say people will become offended and more violent because more and more people will be taken over by these spirits. That's what's happening, folks. People are offended because they're offended in something. These spirits have attached themselves to that individual. Period. They've attached themselves. You see, a lot of people will stop speaking life into somebody else. But again, they'll begin to nitpick. They'll begin to cloud the rooms. You know what? Satan is the author of confusion. Wherever confusion is, Satan is there also. He's working again. The Middle Eastern situation is changing drastically. It's only a matter of time before launches take place. You know, just today, just today, they were doing door drills, the door drills, to make sure that the missile silo doors open and shut properly within a given amount of time. Do you guys know that all countries are engaging in the same practice? In fact, they're doing they're paying a lot of attention to the missile silos around the world. A lot of attention. So, it's only a matter of time. You know what? You don't do drills unless you suspect something. Don't do that. Now, while there's this standard that they do this every so often, it's not standard that the of the kid's disappearance, which, by the way, is not a disappearance, has something to do with this. I suspect that China's 
mandate upon a few countries has something to do with this. I also suspect that Iran's capabilities, their newly divulged capabilities, has something to do with this. For a long time, people thought Iran was some backward nation, correct, who did not have... Well, they told the public they didn't have nuclear weapons. Listen, let me tell you something. Iran does not need a nuclear weapon. They have something worse. You, you know, they've been working on fusion for the last 12 years. They needed the nuclear sites to produce enough power to cause the initial reaction. But that was uh, a while ago. You see, Iran has a great understanding of electromagnetics and how they're tied to gravity, which is why they took down 12 of our drones and landed them. How do you land a drone? 12, not one, 12. Twelve. The real situation that you think you're used to is far different than what it actually is. Far different. And tomorrow, I need to explain. Have you guys ever noticed in the ancient world, right, there are a lot of uh, platforms out there, right? All these toys and technology and everything else that we have, this is old stuff, comparatively speaking. But all of it points to the coming of our Lord a little sooner than what most people thought. There's something coming that's coming sooner than most people thought. I believe that's why people feel an urgency to be right with the Lord, yet they feel the opposition to say there's no cause for alarm within their souls. That's called conflict. I believe that a war is brewing. And in a larger degree, this war is going to be in the minds of millions of people. In a large degree. You see, the Middle East was promised to go through with it going through it. They were. But even that has to be put in perspective. Because a lot of people think in the Middle East is good versus bad, right? Wrong. That's not the deal. It's not good versus bad. Do you really think that a Muslim who's fighting a Muslim is a good and bad situation? Neither one of them are lined up with Jesus. There's no prosperity over there. There's no peace over there because they don't allow Jesus Christ. And they don't allow him as the main cornerstone of what they're doing. You wouldn't believe what they're doing. You wouldn't believe what is really taking place over there. You really wouldn't believe that the United States has opted to allow I'll make sure we can contain anything that gets outside of that area. I honestly believe that the Lord is coming back a whole lot sooner than people thought. Tomorrow we'll get into that. Somebody update me on Pastor Paul real quick. Don't let us miss it. At any rate, you guys know for a fact they have just wiped out all news of space. We went through coverage of space for the last 20 years. All of a sudden, nothing. No news in space. No advances publicized. Nothing. Nothing. I told you guys before, what they don't talk about is in fact the problem, not what they talk about. When, you, when they talk about things, it's obvious to you. The things that are not obvious to you are the dangerous things. Am I cutting out? Well, they don't want me to go there, I guess. They've stopped talking about the heavens. They know for a fact that those cinders that fall straight down 
is not an if. It's an absolute. It's not when they're preparing for it. Will they tell the public anything? No, they won't. But folks, a process that many people saw coming, many people dreamed about, it's coming. At one point, I told you guys to go to the European Space Agency for updates. Even they have begun. They they started a campaign to scrub what they're doing. They're beginning to scrub data from their site because they know what's out there. They know what's coming. All of us can feel it internally, which is why it's so very important for us to be real about our service to Jesus Christ and make no mistake. Don't make a mistake and think that you have solved everything you have to solve concerning our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ outside of his gospel that he wrote. Because if you're doing that, you're going to be deceived. You will be deceived. You're going to be swept away by seducing spirits. Many people are leaning onto their own understanding. They are going to be deceived, period. Many of them are being lost right now. They're being lost. People who have been with the ministries and in the Gospels for 20, 30 years are falling away. Does that even, does that make sense? How can you fall away after decades of service and just, so it was written that it would happen. But the point is, it's happening. Too many people are compromising the truth, the things of the world. They don't know they're opening gates to their own houses. Things are happening. Things are reactivating on earth. And only with the blood of the Lamb can these things not touch you. And I'll say it again, they cannot touch you. They can't. Over there in the Middle East, they're talking, they're, they're trying to sow things in people's minds, saying that these large amounts of people that are being killed are Christians, right? This is what they're saying. That's not the truth. That is not the truth. Over there in the Middle East, it's Muslim against Muslim. That's what's happening in the Middle East. Muslim against Muslim. Sunni and Shia, one governing body taking over everything else, subduing everybody. You see, that's why those people worship the, the dragon to get power to the beast. And they said, who can make war with the beast? Because he subdued everybody outside of Jesus Christ. Notice he could not subdue, nor could he trick, nor could he lead astray those who believed in Jesus Christ, those who were washed by the blood of the Lamb. He couldn't do anything with them. They didn't take his mark. They didn't listen to his words or anything else. That term, very elect, very elect, has a total different meaning than what most people think. Now, you are his elect. But the term, very elect, is a specific group of people who are right there in harm's way. All these things formulating quickly. They're happening quickly. You know what that's called? That's called shock and awe. The Ebola virus, shock and awe. Entero virus, shock and awe. ISIS, shock and awe. Everything being orchestrated by real principality. Real principality. Our faith in Jesus Christ far more than what you think it is. Most people think it's just, you know, I believe in him, I'm going to be saved. Wrong. If I were to, and I will tomorrow, if I'm, I'm, I'm going to start telling you guys what's actually buzzing around you 24 hours a day so that you understand the importance of the blood of the Lamb. What happens when you don't have it Because you really
really have you, you have a slight understanding it's time for us to go to a, another level because listen to me and the reason why I'm going to this other level is because most of us are educated in the basics right we are we're educated in the basics of our Lord's doctrine but nobody wants to explain the obvious what's working in everybody's lives and normally that's because that information is hidden from the populace it really is hidden. They go through great lengths to hide this. Great lengths. Now, why would they go through great lengths to hide something that really doesn't affect you? You know why? Because it makes a difference in everything that you do. You are, you are so close and hovered around. You're just waiting for you to step outside of the blood of a lamb. And this is what is consuming a lot of people right now. You see, because there's no coming back. People can be stuck in perpetual darkness. They can be zipped out of here in ways they wouldn't possibly believe. People can age 46 years in about three seconds. You see, true darkness can make that stuff happen to you. No one is very. People have faith in their presidents and leaders around the world. All of them have to meet the king of the world. Case are on is his name. He's a real character. It's not made up fantasy. The Wizard of Oz stuff, that's not what that is. This is real. Is he starting to preach? Not yet. I see someone else walking up. You guys let me know when Pastor Paul gets in there. But, I'm going to start sharing with you these things so there'll be no mystery left. You know why? Because I have a feeling people are going to bleed over to other doctrines within months. And just in months, once the oceans change, you know what people are going to want? An explanation. Well, what's happening? What's happening? And because the Bible says to be patient and wait upon the Lord, they're not going to want to do that. They're, they want to have an instant answer. And the world's going to lie to them and deceive them deeply. They will be deceived. So, see, we have to take it to a brand new level. We really do. I'm going to take it to a brand new level. A much, much deeper level. Because if, when the demonstrations hit, I'm telling you now, people are going to want to have explanations of what's happening. And if they're not careful, they're going to be laying down the wrong highway. Many, many shows will start on the Internet. Many, many shows will start on the Internet. I, for one, am a bit annoyed, I guess you could say with what's called the spoils of secrecy. So, a new level we will go. For a lot of you, it's going to answer a lot of questions. It's not going to be based on um, theories or anything else, but in fact. But you will understand the importance of the blood of the Lamb upon your life. And I've made this statement before. Christians have no idea what they're being protected from. You have no idea what your faith really is. Most people just think faith is a word. They do. They don't understand what faith is. They don't understand that even their faith instructs their bodies to keep operating. They don't understand they don't understand that if they gave up their will, their body would stop responding. They don't understand. They really don't understand how important the doctrine of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is to both that faith and their spiritual existence. And they really don't understand how sneaky Satan is. I mean sneaky. But there's a horrific 
seductive thing that this world will undergo. Horrific. And so, you know what? I ask you this before Pastor Paul starts preaching. Those who have been, really, I mean really, those who have been on the fence about a great many things, I ask you to do some. Dive into the Gospels of Jesus Christ one more time. Dive into it one more time. Even those, even those who said, well, I read it once, I think I know it. Dive into it one more time. Read the Gospels for the first set of eyes. One more time. Read it one more time. One more time. If we don't know, this could be the last time you could ever do this. This could be the last opportunity for you to harm yourself. Censorship is coming. Forced movements of the populace is coming. You all see this thing forming. I have tried to convey what's actually going to happen, even concerning the Ebola. The Ebola, it does not matter if the Ebola virus spreads or not. The idea of the dangers of Ebola are in the minds of Americans, therefore they can act on a process called civilian containment. They can isolate folks. New laws have been written. All of this is part of censorship. We have an issue. We have a problem. It's time for us to wake up and understand this so that we can act accordingly. If you're walking around like a snowstorm is not hitting and you're in your shorts, and then you happen to walk miles away from your house without a car, and the snowstorm hits, and you didn't know the temperatures would be minus 90 degrees, you're going to die. You're going to freeze to death. Am I right? It's simply because you didn't know what the forecast was. You didn't know that winter storm was coming. You didn't know the temperatures would plummet to minus 97 degrees. Because right now, it's 101, and you're in shorts, so you're going to take a hike. You don't believe it's possible, right? You never would believe it was possible for it to go from 101 to minus 97 in the course of five hours. Nobody would believe that, right? And so if you don't have the forecast, you're going to be unprepared. Didn't Jesus say the same thing? Did he not say the exact same thing? Jesus told us. He told us, you better watch. He told us to watch. You know what, folks? When I talk about these things, you'll also begin to understand why you have authority. Let me ask you a question. Why would you need authority if you weren't potentially going to be harmed by something? Why would you need authority if the Lord were never going to require you to use it? And if nothing bad was out there in the world, why would you ever have to use your authority? Do you not know you have authorities? The same authorities that Jesus exercised on this world, he placed within those who accepted him, who were baptized, and through the power of the Holy Spirit, things were revealed to you. And that authority is needed, though most sit on it. They don't believe they have it, folks. It's a question of your faith. That's why I'm asking you, one more time, go back into the Gospels of Jesus Christ. Go back into the Gospels of Jesus Christ. You will need that authority. Some people are tested with that authority in their dreams, yet they take it no further. They're attacked in their dreams. Many people have reports of being paralyzed in their bed. They're halfway where, halfway asleep. And it feels like they're being held down. And they're forced to exercise that authority when that happens. Yet when they are awake and it doesn't happen anymore, and then they, the first thing they see is, well, I could have had sleep paralysis because I just saw this on the Internet that people have sleep paralysis. So it's no big thing. Listen, those things are real because when you begin to exercise the authority, you never have it again. When you don't exercise the authority, it keeps coming back. What do you think that is? When something keeps coming back to you, yet when you plead 
the blood of Christ over it. When you use the authority given you by Jesus Christ, when you exercise that upon that something you don't know about, it never comes back again. It didn't come back. Yet the scientists will say, well, that's called sleep paralysis. You know what they call um, demonic spirits? Psychosis. They don't think they're real. They call it psychosis. Those same scientists have equated that when Jesus was here on earth, he was able to cause a mass illusion and psychosis. Yet, why do we take the side of science in that regard? Why do we continue to let science interpret our faith for us? Anybody ever thought of that one? There are seducing spirits in this world. And it's beginning to get very heavy. I know that one day no one will be able to go outside because if one raindrop hits them, they're going to be in trouble. Now, if you don't know about that, what's going to happen to you? See, because here's a fact. If you're on a boat, if you're on a boat and the Lord loves you dearly and you jump off in the ocean with two lead weights tied to your feet, you know what's going to happen to you? You're going to drown. You're going to drown. That's what's going to happen. Does your father love you? Yes, he does. Will he ever leave you or forsake you? No, he will not. But if you're not educated enough to know that lead weights tied around your feet with chains and you dumping, dumping yourself in the ocean, they don't mix. Well, then guess what? He said, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. I'm trying to convey something to you. What you don't know can destroy you. Why do you think all this time was permitted to mankind? The Lord told us why. He told us what time was for. He told us in his word. The blood of the Lamb is real. You are a real spiritual person. Listen, you're, you're a living soul. That's what you are. You are a living soul. Then why in the world would the Lord say he breathed the breath of life and to Adam and Eve and they became a living soul? Why would he say that? A living... What is a soul? A living soul? What's the opposite of a living soul? A dead soul. Right? A dead soul. So listen to me. That breath of life... is taken away through the rejection of Jesus Christ. And then guess what else? There are a lot of dead things in this world that are condemned to death that just can't wait to get a hold of those that follow them. All these ancient stories and the mythology and all this garbage, I'd say about 90% of it is true. Let me tell you why. Not, not, not true as far as the details. But you have to remember something. There was a point where they didn't have pen and paper to perpetuate stories. So you know what they did? They made up riddles. They made up rhymes. They made up songs. That's what they did. And so they passed knowledge down from generation to generation. Somehow, we come into this real technical field. And we no longer believe in things that our scientists say don't believe in it. We have effectively handed over our minds to science. Because if science says something can't happen, our confidence is really in science and not in our Father. Let me prove that to you. When Ellen passed, the scientists said, no, it's not going to do anything. You know what most people did? They said, good. The scientists said, it's not going to do anything, so we got nothing to worry about. You turn on the news when something is happening, right? Before Katrina, before Katrina, a lot of people turned on the news and they said, well, it's a probability this storm is just going to, you know, it'll degrade and go somewhere else. You know what people did? They said, Phew. all right, the TV on the news, I hear this term all the time from civilians. Well, the news says it's going to do such and such, so we're good to go. Well, the news says 
we need to do this, that, and the other. So we're good to go. Now, that would be fine if these people were not Christians. But I'm talking about Christians basing their future, basing their steps in life on the public media. Folks, I'm, I'm telling you what's real. If, if people are always talking about some type of delusion, they're already living in it. They live in it. Listen, let me, let me advise you of something. Do not follow any man, but read the Word of God yourself. Don't, be, don't lean unto your own understanding, but plead the blood of, blood of Christ over your life. Dive into His Word and let the Holy Spirit begin to show you what is real and what is not. Don't you take the words from a man's mouth and go run with it as though it's true. You better begin to investigate the Word of God to get the truth out of it. Stop doing that. Stop trusting in mankind for your own comfort and you trust in your Father in Heaven for your comfort. Don't take the words that I say and say, oh, well, I was, you know, that's confirmation. He said, well, no, you better take it to the Bible, the truth of all truth. You better learn to get your comfort directly from Him and not the world. You place your comfort in me, and then I die, and everything I say turns out to be wrong. Then where are you at? Where are you at? You're in a bad mess. God forbid that ever happened. Place your comfort in the words of our Lord and Savior. Don't put them in men. Don't put them in the things of men. This is part of that delusion that people are being given over to, and they can't see it. I can't see it. It's just like my believing in Jesus Christ. I don't need confirmation from anybody for that because it bears witness in my soul. You too have things that you have seen and heard or something in your spirit and then you hear the Bible, the words of the Bible confirm it. It bears witness in your soul. You see, when the Bible confirms something within you, it's a real confirmation. It's real. I'm, you don't call up Brick Hume, and because he has the same idea, you say, well, that's confirmation. No, don't, don't do that. Don't you do it. And a lot of people will say, well, two or three witnesses. Yeah, what kind of witnesses are they? Are they witnesses for Satan? Are they witnesses for science or something? What kind of, you better validate your witnesses. How about that? Because if they don't share in the blood of the Lamb and they confirm something in you, it could be totally wrong. You could be led astray. Folks, I think pastor's preaching right now. Am I correct? Is he preaching? And we're going to switch over to Pastor Paul and get some of this word. And then if there's time afterward, I'm going to be right back on. I'm going to be right back on. I'm going to be right back on. Let's see if we can do this without blowing up the uh, everything.